Hello everyone, this is Yamana Naushad from BSc OT, second semester. Today, I am going to give a presentation on physiology of respiratory system. These are the contents I am going to talk about. The first part, which is introduction. Can anyone tell me what is respiration? Respiration is a process of intake of oxygen and exhale out of carbon dioxide from the body. Removal of carbon dioxide, which is also called. This job is highly performed by lungs. But Lungs is not only the organ that helps or that does this job. There are other certain organs which we'll discuss about it. Now the question is, what is respiratory system? Respiratory system is a set or network of organs that helps or involves in breathing. It introduces the carbon, uh, it introduces the oxygen in our body and expel out the carbon dioxide from the body. Now the question is, organs involved in respiratory system or in breathing. So the organs which are involved in the respiratory system is nose, which is also called, uh, which also includes the nasal cavity, nostrils, mouth, which is oral cavity, then pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchies, and lungs. Lungs is the major and important part of this respiratory system. Now, if we talk about the respiratory system, there is a tract, like from nose to the lungs, there is a tract which is called respiratory tract. Respiratory tract, if we divide it into two parts, then the upper part is uh, the upper part consists of nose, nose trail, uh, nasal cavity, uh, then larynx, then pharynx, which helps to intake of the air in the body. Then the lower part, which consists of trachea, bronchi, and lungs. Trachea, bronchi, and bronchus makes up a tracheobronchial tree. A tracheobronchial tree is a series of small tubes that transfer air from upper respiratory tract to the lower respiratory tract to the alveoli. Alveoli is a small sac which is present in the lungs. Now, the functions. If we talk about the functions, the major function of respiratory system is intake of oxygen, outtake of carbon dioxide from the body, and exchange of gases. So the exchange of gases includes exchange of carbon oxygen, then carbon dioxide in the body. The second important thing that in respiratory system is nasal cavity. Nasal cavity plays an important role in our body. It filtrates the dust particles, which helps the, uh, the mucus, uh, sorry, just that helps the filtration of uh, air, which uh, filtration of air and the dust particle, which will be removed from the body. It is done by a small hair-like structure that is present in the nasal cavity. Then the humidification, which provide moisture to the nasal cavity and the air. Then olfaction. Olfaction is like is to smell the odor. Then the modification of temperature. If we talk about modification of temperature, then it means like if the uh, if the climate is very dry, if the weather is very dry, very hot, it's heated, then the nasal cavity will help the air to balance out with the temperature of the body. Now the major part, which is lungs, which is the important part of the respiratory system, it helps in uptake of oxygen from the air from the outside atmosphere and expel out the carbon dioxide from the blood. Then there is the second function, which is non-respiratory function. It is not like non-respiratory function is not important because non-respiratory function helps or get supports the respiratory functions to work. If we talk about the non-respiratory functions, it has a defensive action, like the mucosa of the lungs uh, produce IgA, which helps in protection against the infection. Then the synthesis of surfactant, which is a special liquid that helps the lungs to work properly. It is uh, synthesized by the type 2 alveolar cells. Then the temperature regulation, acid-based ba acid balance, excretory functions, and voice production. It is done by the non respiratory functions. If we talk about the pulmonary ventilation, pulmonary ventilation is same as the respiratory, uh, respiratory functions like inhalation of carbon, inhalation of oxygen, exhalation of carbon dioxide, it is same. Gas exchange. If we talk about, if we talk about the respiratory minute volume, respiratory minute volume is a volume of air we breathe in. We breathe in and out of the lungs. Every one minute in our quiet breathing, in a relaxing mode, when we do quiet breathing, the amount of air we take in or expel out is respiratory minute volume. If we want to calculate the respiratory minute volume, we need to add, uh, multiply the tidal volume and the respiratory rate. Tidal volume is the amount of air we take inside like during inspiration by quiet breathing. And the respiratory rate varies from person to person because of their 
uh, physique, because of their immunity, their body structure, everything. So the respiratory rate varies. So in total, it's approx six liter uh, respiratory minute volume. If we talk about the alveolar, venti uh, alveolar ventilation, so the air that we have taken inside is somewhere goes into the alveoli, which is the smaller sex, which is the smaller sex. Volume of air entering the alveoli per minute is known as alveolar, per, uh, alveolar ventilation. Alveolar, to calculate the alveolar ventilation, we need to subtract the dead space from the tidal volume and multiply it by the respiratory rate. Now, there is a question, what is dead space? So the dead space is a part, is a area where gas exchanges does it occurs. So it is from the trachea to the terminal bronchi. So terminal bronchus, it is of two types. Dead space is of two types. First is anatomical dead space. And second is physiological dead space. Anatomical dead space is a part of a respiratory passage. It is a part of respiratory passage from the trachea to bron uh, terminal bronchus. That is not involved in gas esteem. That is called anatomical dead space. Its normal volume is 150 ml. Now, if we talk about the physiological dead space, it includes anatomical dead space as well as alveolar dead space. Alveolar dead space is alveolar dead space is uh, uh, when we take air, it goes inside of the lungs. And there in the lungs, there is alveoli present. So the alveolar dead space is the area where uh, in the alveoli where gas exchanges doesn't occur. So the, if we calculate the physiological dead space is equals to the anatomical dead space and alveolar dead space. Then the physiological dead space is more important and significant than anatomical dead space. Now comes the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary circulation is the flow of air, flow of air, sorry, pulmonary circulation is the flow of blood from the lungs to the heart, from the left ventricle to the, sorry, from the right ventricle to the right atrium. It is low pressure, low resistance, then highly capacitant system. Pulmonary circulation are thick walled. Pulmonary capillaries are larger than the systematic cal capillaries. If we talk about its functions, it has the gas exchange function, metabolic reaction, uh, metabolic functions, filtration and dissolution of clots, and the blood reservoirs, which holds 450 ml of blood. If we talk about the blood volume, then our lungs contain 450, then our lungs contain 450 ml of blood in our body. Then uh, the 70 first, the 70 ml of blood is in the pulmonary capillaries, and the remaining among the pulmonary veins and the arteries. Now come the mechanism of respiratory system, which is very important part of this topic. How the mechanism, how the respiratory function works. So, when we breathe, have you ever observed how we breathe? The slightly in, uh, inward and forward or downward movement that occurs in our body while quite breathing. It's called uh, mechanism of breathing. In this process, two parts of breathing involves. So now, first, let's know what is breathing. Breathing is a physical mechanism that helps the physical mechanism of taking in air and exhaling out the carbon dioxide from the body. The two important steps that are involved in mechanism of breathing are inhalation, which is also known as inspiration. How does inhalation occur? So, inhalation is also a physical mechanism where the diaphragm, which separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity, flattens, it contracts. And the when we take in the air, the uh, lungs expanded. If we talk about the ribcage, which protects or covers the lungs, uh, that expanded too, that uh, uh, lift ups, that little uh, moves forward. And that's why the, the ribcage is not a sealed wall, but a cage like structure that helps the heart, sorry, the helps the lungs to expand. From there, all, the in, uh, all these increase the volume of the lungs and decrease the pressure from which the outside air, which is present outside of the lungs, rush inside. Now come the exhalation process, which is also called expiration. Now, as we know that in inhalation, inhalation process, as we know in inhalation process, the diaphragm flattens, but in exhalation, the diaphragm contracts back, like it relaxes back into its dome shaped. It is a reverse uh, moment, is a reverse uh, situation that occurs when we breathe out. 
the diaphragm relaxes and the rib also contracts get back into the original shape and the volume inside the lungs reduces and the pressure increases that's why the air present inside the lungs are uh, rushed out from the nostril from the lungs to the nostril now we all know that there is breathing sound present in our body which are uh, which can be observed by stethoscope there are two types of breathing sound first is vesicular which is the due to the air flowing in the uh, large airway and alveoli then there is bronchial which is due to the turbulent flow of air in the bron bronchi now the question is is breathing a volunteer or involuntary process have you ever wonder our breathing is involuntary or volunteer so for this let's hold our breath for a second let's hold it keep your breath still now release how do you feel exhausted suffocated that's what it is our breathing process is a involuntary movement because we can't control our breathing rate but but to some extent we can just hold it we can just hold it or control it for a moment but we can't control it as our will so the breathing is an involuntary movement now come the transportation of gases so the oxygen rich air oxygen rich air goes through our nostril to the nasal cavity then to the oral cavity and to the nose then it goes to the pharynx then comes to the larynx then to the trachea from trachea it goes to the prim, uh, principal bronchus lower bronchus segmental bronchus and terminal bronchus from there it goes into the alveolar duct and from alveolar duct it goes to the alveoli which is as you know a smaller sacs present in our lungs which is highly uh, which is highly gas exchange where highly gas stage occurs now from there the oxygen rich blood uh, sorry the oxygen rich blood Um, which is called oxyhemoglobin bind uh, goes to the blood vessels and then to the tissues now the air exhaled uh, from the same process now the air we have taken in comes out from the, our body from the same process from the tissues to our nostril if we talk about the oxygen transportation like transportation of gases if we talk about the oxygen transport it is done in a soluble state by plasma the amount of o2 carried in the dissolved state in plasma in total 3% of o2 is carried in dissolved state and in hemoglobin in the combination with hemoglobin uh, it's about 97% where o2 is uh, o2 molecules combined with loosely and reversibly uh, with heme protein of hemoglobin which is called oxygenation and single hemoglobin molecules can bind up to four oxygen molecules now come the carbon dioxide transportation as you know like if oxygen is transported then carbon dioxide is also going to transported it from our body to back to the environment so that it is dissolved in blood plasma bonded with hemoglobin which is called carbohemo carbino sorry carbomin carbamino hemoglobin and then it is transported to lungs then lungs from there it is exhaled out now comes the tidal volume so the tidal volume is the amount of air which we intake or in on out of the lungs during inspiration the amount of air which we ins uh, inspire which we inhale <laughs> during the quiet breathing the time when we are breathing quietly and silently it is called the tidal volume it's about 500 to 750 ml now comes the inspiratory reserve volume if we talk about inspiratory reserve volume it means taking in air with maximum effort taking in air with maximum effort which is about 200 uh, 200 ml or 2 liter now comes the expiratory reserve volume as we have already inhaled the oxygen or the air now it's time for exhaling out so the expiratory rate is the expiratory reserve volume is the volume exhaled by an active expiration effort after passive expiration volume of active expiration effort after the passive inspiration so the erv is about 1 liter or 100 ml if we talk about the residual volume uh, the re residual volume is the air when we take in air and exhale out there is it's not like our lungs becomes empty somewhere there are some uh, air present is still inside our uh, lungs so the air which is left inside after a effort full uh, maximum expiration is called residual volume it's about 1300 ml now the question is what is 
total lung capacity if we talk about total lung capacity so the total lung capacity is when all the air is taken together all the air which are taken together is called total lung capacity is about 5 liter of 500 5000 ml now the question is what is vital capacity when we take in air the air in the lungs goes fully flattened so the maximum air which is expelled out from the fully flattened uh, lungs is called vital capacity is it it is about 3 uh, 3500 ml uh, if you want to calculate it we have to add the tidal volume uh, it is uh, inspiratory reserve volume and then the expiratory reserve volume now there is applied physiology where the pulmonary hypertension means the high blood pressure that affects the arteries of the lungs the type of high blood pressure that affects the arteries of the lungs making it difficult for the blood to flow which leads to the heart attack so means the right heart failure if we talk about the pulmonary edema it occurs due to the increase of pulmonary interstitial fluid pressure cause accumulation of fluid in pulmonary interstitial space and alveoli and it causes the left side heart failure pneumonia and oxygen toxicity that's all thank you